Holy oh fuck, uh, fine, how do you do? Turbo prop, leaving on a milk run from Montreal Dorval. The wheel come off of her. Now anybody can give you more or less technical details, but I'm gonna uh, give you the full water cooler chat. I'm no gynecologist, but I'll take a look. Kenny Rogers on his I need the money so I don't give a fuck to her, unironically queued for Air Canada's delayed baggage. Singing the gambler. You picked on time to leave me loose wheel. This, this is what happens when you don't turn off your phone. Let's not even think about what might happen if you wear a muffs during takeoff, eh? We gotta harken back, way back to when Air Canada was a crown corporation, owned by the state but operating at arm's length. Or not, as you will shortly see. This aircraft is a Dash 8. The Havilland Dash 8 mine, not to be mistaken for a diesel locomotive of the same name by General Electric. Confuse the two at your Casey Jones. Back in the early 90s, Air Canada, subject to the inducements of the body politic, went a courting for to buy some aeroplanes. Lots of them. So many, and at such expense that Boeing bought the Havilland to secure the sale of said planes. Boeing were in mortal combat with Airbus, you see. De Havilland, being a Canadian manufacturer of feeder planes, would sweeten the pot with the domestic Canuck manufactory, something that Airbus wouldn't match. But Airbus had a desperate social climbing wolf in amongst the flock, and in 1988, an order for 34 Airbus A320s was placed. Jump cut to 93, Lion Brian Mulrooney. L-I-O-N, or L-Y-I-N, you decide, the most reviled Minister Prime in all of Canadian history was completing, lovely Serb wife in tow, a global farewell junket. At taxpayers' expense, naturlich, as Mulrooney's popularity hit rock bottom, he graciously resigned his position, but not his taxpayer-provided mansion at 24 Sussex in Ottawa. His family couldn't move, you see, as his new home in Montreal was not yet ready. Fast forward to 1995, contrary to the old cliché, the Mounties don't always get their man. While still a member of Parliament, former El Presidente went to work consulting on a pasta business. Under public scrutiny, Mulrooney, years later, claimed three $75,000 cash payments from one Karl Heinz Schreiber. Schreiber, a dual Canadian and, and German citizen, an arms dealer and businessman, said it was actually $300,000 payments in crisp $1,000 bills. But hey, what's a missing 75 k between me, you, and the CRA? Now, old Karl Hans had many hands in many pots. He helped Mulrooney oust a political competitor way back in 83. Schreiber contributed 25 grand to the campaign himself and had Franz Joseph Strauss, Airbus chairman, contribute a similar amount. Tarantino movie slide back to 1988. Boeing, smarting from the snowy snub, put de Havilland up for sale in a fit of pique. The manufacturer of our little Dash 8 that could was eventually purchased by Bombardier Aerospace in Montreal, Quebec. It's like an Albertan family reunion. Everybody pretends they didn't catch you slinking off with your cousin. The current glut of historic revisionism aside, we're on the twatter here. You can't separate the mechanical failures from the human ones. In this case, we see some spits and sparks coming out of the axle shaft. We got orangey spits and sparks. That's steel what's being uh, melted away there. And also we have some white. That means that this rim got to be not manganese, but the emmer uh, magnesium. We're getting some flame shooting out there from the grease burning, and we're also getting some bearing material. Now he zooms out. Here the wheel comes off. Now this is very salient. You see it's so hot now. Now we're just straight up burning the grease off of there. You see that? Just straight up burning the grease off. And as soon as it came from under load, it fell right off of there. It wasn't retained by anything. But if you have a look real close, <laughs> we'll come off of her. Okay, now back 
These guys are a little bit freaked out. I would be too. This is wholly indicative of the state of Air Canada regional jets. Here's the state of the, the pleather in this jet. Yeah, not particularly, I, I hear you buddy, not particularly inspiring confidating. Now, what they do is they fly around. Now this, you'll notice they're not in the brace position or anything like this. This, this jet can take off and land on one wheel. So there is redundancy there, clearly. Nobody's freaking out. Now what they do is they had to fly around because they had to dump fuel. The planes take off at with so much fuel in them that they're too heavy to land. So if there's a problem, they need to dump fuel and that gets dumped over Montreal City. You might think that's kind of dangerous, but the thing is it's so far up in the air that uh, it evaporates before it hits the ground. It never does hit the ground. It just, uh, you know, we filter it through our lungs. No big deal. Jet A being kerosene. That's fine. And we're moving down in. And he's real careful in that initial touch. We can see that there's still the brake material here. They stack up. These are uh, friction linings. And, oh, there we go. We got weight on her. The nut, the nut is still there. That tells us that it wasn't the mechanic's fault. Now, if we have a look, let's have a look, see. Here's what the wheel is supposed to look like. This is from a drug run uh, from uh, Colombia going to Mexico. I don't know if that's the case, but I have watched uh, Narcos on <laughs> Netflix. That's what the wheel is supposed to look like. Magnesium. Here's the parts stack up. Might not be perfectly accurate, but we can see the countenance of the rim there. Tapered roller bearing, backed by a tapered roller bearing. You don't see the uh, the nut, the spindle nut on here, but you get the idea. There's no brake stack up, so this might be the one. Let's have a look at this one. Enlarge it a little bit. Same thing. There's a brake stack up. You can see the bore where the tapered roller bearings sit, and of course this would be retained on the front end by a nut. Haha. -ha. So here's the vanity cover. Uh, chrome Peterbilt on there and uh, a retention nut what sits in these slots to keep that big essentially castellated nut to preload those tapered roller bearings uh, dingle dangling up in the air above Montreal here nothing but woods in Canada never come here <laughs> this is as urban as it gets you see the brake stack up and the spindle and the nut still intact there's another shot of a failure, different failure. It seems to be, I dare say, potentially a recurring theme. You'll excuse my ridiculously oversized tapered roller bearings. What's the point of having the cock and balls of a bull moose if you can't swing them around once in a while? I want to show you what's going on here. So we tell that the mechanic did put that nut on properly because it didn't come off. The tapered roller bearings, what must have happened was the cage of the tapered roller bearings grenaded. And if the tapered roller bearing grenades, of course these are backed by that nut and that nut preloads it. So that, that torque on that nut is critical. It's got to be preloaded enough so that it doesn't weeble wobble around, but it also can't be so tight that it, it creates too much heat friction from being pressed in there and then the thing blows up. Now the stack up, going from port to starboard, considering that the castellated nut would be on, the retention nut would be on this side. The shaft going through the center of these. The only way that wheel could come off is one, if the magnesium wheel itself, the hub, broke free, which could very well be because we saw lots of white sparks, that is burning magnesium, and we also saw that the brake stack up was intact. Now that brake stack up, some of those brake plates need to be splined or otherwise indexed onto the wheel hub itself. And the fact that they're still there might be because the hub of the wheel broke off. Or it could also be that uh, it worked its way out of that stack up and the roller cage on here grenaded allowing the rollers to fly out of there at a well basically at machine gun speed and then because this is a tapered roller bearing 
the inside diameter of this tapered outside is large enough to fit over the largest diameter of the inside bearing race. So if you lose these rollers due to being houred out or failure or lack of lubrication, now we saw in the stack up there, there was a lubricating line. Sometimes those don't work. It's a mechanical contrivance and it does fail. A lot of moving parts just in this bearing. And you can see if you crack this cage and the rollers were allowed to get out, then that wheel is not long for this life. However, having said that, not really a big deal because there was redundancy built into the system. Now, they got into a situation because that wheel fell off that one more failure would have killed them all. But in this case, the holes in the Swiss cheese didn't line up. There was enough redundancy there so that they could dump fuel and land on Kudos that to the crew. one wheel. A conscientious hand on the helm can save us all when the wheels fall off. Be the root cause slap happy maintenance management or political influence peddling. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice. Riddle me this. You're the leader of a G7 nation and how very little money it seems to take to curry political favor. Let's uh, a dog with a bone here. How much does the Prime Minister of Canada make? 300, uh, that's, that's a fair chunk of change there. But back in when Mulroney stepped down, 93. So that would have been, what, 100 and, well, uh, 200 grand. What were they doing when he stepped? Okay, yeah, 1993, he stepped down. Born in Bay Cobo, Quebec. Spouse, Mila Shoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshoshosh
I wonder what happens when you got a, a Eastern European brought up wife who uh, you get you lose your job. She's a housewife. You lose your job. Uh, visa's calling, and you got a house being renovated or built. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah.